everybody welcome back Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing and uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please go ahead and do so I'll give you a few minutes I'll, I'll let you sub to the channel and like the video so we'll, we'll give you a few minutes let's uh, give everybody time to be able to do that <laughs> alright so if you haven't liked the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please go ahead and do so like the video leave a comment you have a comment below or if you have a question, I'll leave it below. All right, so this week we have something very special going on. We have the reopening of flounder season, being able to harvest flounder. Uh, that happens. So the season is closed until December 14th. But at midnight, at 12 a.m. on December 15th, you can start harvesting flounder again. Now, there is rules and regulations. There's all kind of, there's there's reasons why they, they, they do the fishery closure, but we're not going to get on into that. So, what I typically do with my Patreons is I sit down, I enjoy my cup of coffee. How about this? How about this for a mug? You know, my son got me this. He thought it was hilarious. Old lives matter. But, um, yeah, I sit down, I drink a cup of coffee, I do my forecast for the week. I plan out my week. What am I doing? All right, so I plan my week. I want to know what I'm targeting, how am I fishing, and what areas I'm interested in fishing. Every week I sit down, and I'll look at the I'll look at three things. I'll look at the weather, I'll look at the winds, and I'll look at the tide movement. And I will, my own personal schedule, I know what days I'm available to fish, and based on that, I kind of want to know what the feel is on what nature is doing out there and uh, in what areas I'll, I kind of want to target. So when I sit down on Sundays and Mondays, and I, I would do this, I sit down on Sundays and Mondays, and I will plan out my week and a lot. And every week, I share and record it just like now, and I do it for my Patreons. And I'll give them just a glimpse of insight of what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, what's going on, what am I seeing on the water, and, and what I hear and also see what people are catching. So I do it every every Sunday, every Monday. I try to do it on Sundays. But uh, today is Monday, and, and I, I didn't have a chance to do it yesterday. But because today, because this week is a special week and the season, flounder season, is opening back up to be able to harvest flounder, I thought I would share this content that I make exclusive Every week for my patrons, I thought I'll share it with all of you guys. I know some of you are like, well, why don't you just share it every single week with everybody, Ruben? Well, that's not how it works. You want exclusive content, so it's more support of the channel. Well, it's people that want to be a patron and support the channel more. That's why I made started making this content, the fishing forecast. Um, it was just another way I could say thank you, almost like a gift that I could give. I can give my patrons. So that that's why I don't post it to to um. And it's off the cuff. I mean, I don't. Most of the time, I don't have this mic on. I don't have the lighting. It's really me slapping a GoPro on the desk and talking straight to it, wearing whatever I have on. You know, it just is so random, and uh, so it's really just off the cuff, almost behind the scenes for patrons. But anyway, I, I, I got way much. I got way into that um, explanation. So what I do is that, and and let me say this. A forecast is a forecast, right? We all know that a lot of times the forecast, the weather's going to be wrong, the winds can be wrong, the tide level could be wrong. You know, there's there can be different reasons why the tide doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and most of it's all based on weather, and the bite forecast can be wrong too. I don't go out, I don't let a forecast determine when I can or can't go out. If I want to go out, unless it's just like a crazy storm and crazy winds that is unsafe. But I'm going to go out no matter what. I use these these sites and apps as a tool to let me better understand what the elements and what's going on out there. So this is my fishing forecast. Like I said, I do this every Sunday and Monday for my Patreon. So this is something you're interested in and you're like, hey, you know what? I want to, I want to, um, I want to get this every week, Ruben. And on helps further support the channel. Well, then join Patreon. There's a link in the description section. So we're gonna we're gonna switch over to the to the computer, and you're gonna see exactly what I look at and and how I how I go about picking what's going on on the week. And I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining these apps or these websites. Um, I've done past videos on them. But if you do have any questions, 
uh, leave them in the description section or leave them in the comment section below and, and I'll, I'll answer them for you. But the first thing I do is that I will look at the weather. Now you can use whatever app you want to, whatever you feel comfortable using. I like to use the weather channel. So when I'm sitting at my desktop, I will sit there and look at the weather channel. And, and for argument's sake, we're going to pick Galveston so we can have everything kind of cold aside or go in line, right? Because we have the flounder season opening. So this forecast is really going to be geared toward catching flounder. So 10 day forecast. So today's Monday, 71 degrees. And it's it's warm this year. It's very warm this year. The water's warm, everything's warm. So look at Tuesday, Tuesday 75. There's the low. You got evening showers. So you have a south wind around 19 and then switches out of the northwest. We're gonna talk about the wind a little more with a different app. But I do like to kind of look what this one is doing here. So I'm looking at the weather. So we got some evening and AM showers. So it's Tuesday. Evening, if you're out, you're probably going to run into some rain. Wednesday morning, you're probably going to run into some rain as well, the Galveston area. And you kind of see, like, the temperature drop a little bit, right? We see that that change in temperature. And even more so when it goes into next week, when you're looking at Tuesday, Wednesday, go into next week, and you see the lows. And then right here, kind of look at what the rain is doing. All right, so we have a little bit of rain next Monday. We also have some on Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday p.m., Wednesday morning. Um and then kind of see what the wind is doing. So every time the wind shifts out of the north, it's kind of let you know that you possibly going to have a a a cold front that come in. And Wednesday Tuesday night, that's exactly what we have until Wednesday morning, and a cold front comes in. Now that's exciting. That's exciting for catching flounder because that's going to drop the temperature. That north wind can drop the water level as well. If it's sustained for high winds for a long period of time, it could really drop the water level. But it's going to drop the temperature. So what that does every single time we have a cold front come through, it gets a push of flounder. We have a push of flounder that exit areas that come through some main arteries or channels leading into the Gulf. And that's where, as anglers, where we pick them off. So cold front is good. Love cold front. Love windy, love cold, love rain. That's flounder season, right? You got to love it. All right, so like I said, we're going to switch over, and here's the wind. So I like to use Wind Finder. There's another app, too, called Windy. Windy is, is pretty cool, too. It's pretty good. It gives you a nice, decent forecast along the whole week. I'm just going to click right here, and then we're going to click on Forecast. And this kind of shows you. So here's the gust. Here's sustained, and it kind of shows you what the week's like. But Windy this past year has has been a little off for me. I don't look at Windy too too much. Uh, I like I like Wind Finder. So uh, so here's the, here's the area where I target flounder. Right, you have this main channel between Pelican Island and Galveston Island. You have this main channel that goes out Texas City Dyke, and then you have the area that leads out to the Gulf, and you have North and South Jetty. So this area all right here is kind of where the hot spot is for flounder for me. So I'm going to click on that, and that's going to show us what the wind is. So I'm going to go to 6 a.m., and then we're going to look on Tuesday. So Tuesday, and I like this because you can see the direction it's going in. So let's say that you want more protected area if you're in your kayak or whatever, then you would, you know, kind of fish around this. Of course, you can't get over here, but if you could, you kind of fish around this area. It's kind of protected, kind of, you know, you see this whole area over here, ferry landing there, and you can see, like, Pelican Island. So you're going to have, here's... Um, see what park can have wind in your face on the back side of pelican island is a little more protected on tuesday so that's why it's always important to look at the wind and kind of and that's kind of how i want to know okay i want to fish i'm gonna fish the north side of pelican or i'm gonna fish the ferry landing or i'm gonna cover to bolivar fish fish the north side of bolivar island you know that's kind of how i how i know the areas i kind of want to target is also is based on the wind too so we have where did that go all right so on wednesday uh, 6 a.m., 16 miles an hour northwest. So Tuesday, we had it switch overnight. So we're going to look at evening time. Where are we at? It's like, okay, so Wednesday morning, still at the southwest. Wednesday, so it's showing here that the front isn't really going to affect until Wednesday about 3 a.m. That's when you see the north winds that come in. So there it goes. It picks up a little more at 6, 16 north northwest. 16 and keep in mind that this is just sustained so this is not the actual gust so this is just sustained and this is just forecasted so anything and everything can change and you can see here for thursday and this is when the flounder season opens thursday's kind of look it's going to look like a nice favorable day as far as wind goes so if you're in your kayak you're in a small craft doesn't look like thursday's going to be too bad 
again this is just forecasted so you want to we'll click back over here in Thursday nine miles an hour that's what that's what they're saying on the weather channel so Friday and there we go some wind kicks up now I knew eventually we we're gonna run into some of that wind when you have that cold front come through so I was a little confused about that but you can see they're predicting it for this area to be on Friday and then it kind of dies down so keep that in mind Friday morning if you're planning on going out north northeast 20 miles an hour be pretty strong again if you're in a kayak or small vessel craft um, obviously you see the wind is coming this direction so if I'm gonna go fish Siwa Park I probably wouldn't be on this side Friday morning I might be closer over here to the rocks come wait fish this area so just give you some give you an idea and Saturday the winds let's click on that again 15 north northeast at 6 in the morning kind of shifting out of the uh, east north east northeast east northeast Sunday so that was Saturday 15 Sunday 16 next Monday 23 east southeast so the winds really shift around so Monday we're going to have another some more strong winds coming out of the uh, coming out of the south so that is the wind all right so now let's look at tide so I like looking using a tide for fishing and I'm going to select Galveston Bay South entrance that's kind of close to the area that we want to look at and I'm gonna skip typically I'll go down I'll look at Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and I, but I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip all the way to the 14th or the 15th because I want to see when flounder season open I want to see what the what the tide is doing now do do I think that the tide is really going to play a huge role when it comes to the flounder surge yes and no um typically tide plays a big role on the bite but with the flounder migrating and flounder moving it's it's it's, it's kind of up in the air um and again this is just a forecast it doesn't mean that it's exactly two o'clock you're gonna start catching fish or one o'clock you start catching fish whenever the bite forecast is there this just kind of gives you a rule of thumb and a measurement Right, especially if you're if you're not targeting flounder and you're not just gonna go post up and wait fish an area. If you're in your kayak or if you're in a boat and you make you map out A, B, and C, I really want to go at B at C. C is my hot spot. That's where the area I want to fish. So I want to be A and B. But then you know by C, whatever target time is for the major bite forecast, you know you want to be there at C during that time frame. So I mean it's just I mean it is what it is, right? So all right, so Thursday morning very strong bite oh my gosh look at that that is a very good bite kind of have an outgoing tide all day until about 1 15 so that outgoing tide can play a little bit of a role because a lot of times the flounder will full will fill that pool and they will pull them out of the shallow areas where you like to wait fish or bank fish and they can go down a little deeper into into some of the some of the lower line uh, areas where it's deeper uh, they can really stack up on those ledges. So keep that in mind when you're if you are out there fishing on the 15 for flatties All right, so really good really good bite at sunrise Low bite. Um, sorry low tide a little bit of bite and again at at sunset So when you have that water incoming I, I've noticed this this year actually last few years then when you have that incoming tide That's really good for the flounder bite. So keep that in mind if you're out so on the 16th which is Friday, we're going to skip down and look at the bite forecast. Kind of starts telling off a little bit. That means we're probably getting ready to have a tide change, right? You're probably going to have a pretty pretty decent tide change here. But still, you got a little bit of a bite, a little slow here, almost like a slack tide. Not a lot of water movement. You want to have good water movement no matter what. All right, so on the 17th, which is Saturday, there we go. We have a little bit of tide change. So you have low tide at 530, and it doesn't move a whole lot. You have a little bit of bite, but it's not moving a whole lot. But that might play a good role. That might play a good part. That is slow and comes in. So if you are out there, you hit the sunrise at six. You want to go wait fish and get some of those flatties. Uh, um, so that might have a really good bite. You'll probably have a really good bite chance when they are coming back in a little bit. And they, if they when they do start their run, we're gonna skip back over here and we're gonna look on. Saturday east northeast 15 mile an hour winds not bad at all that's pretty decent and then you have high tide and you got the tide coming back out but again it's a little bit of a slack tide there so if it's a little slow you know be, be hesitant 
I mean, don't if you're a little slow, be patient. You know, slow down your lure a lot, and you can see Sunday picks up a little bit. Better tide movement. See, I like Sunday. If I was going to go now, when I go, I go. I just I, I these this these forecasts don't deter me when to go. When I go, I go. Um, it's again, I just use it as a measuring stick. But if I had Saturday and Sunday, and I only had one day to pick. I would definitely pick Sunday because you just have a lot better water movement. You have low tide at 530, big bite forecast, a high tide at 1 o'clock. So you're going to start seeing between between maybe about 9 and 1, it's going to you know stall a little bit. Then you have that water move again, and that's kind of why you have to pick up that next, that next little fishy there. So Monday on the 15th, again, another good look at this water movement. This is really good right here. Monday in the 19th, I think I said the 15th, but anyway, uh, 545 is low tide, big bite, just past sunrise, big water movement, and then I'm just gonna skip. A, I'm just skip ahead and go to Tuesday. Look at Tuesday. Tuesday better, even better bite forecast. What are we doing? So, all right, I'm looking. See, I just I just wanted to look at the calendar right here. The 23rd is a new moon. So I normally don't skip this far out, but I want to show you the new moon. The new moon, look at that. Look at that bite forecast. That probably would change a little bit when we get a little closer, but look at that water movement. That's the new moon, 23rd. I love the new moon. The day before the new moon, the new moon, the day after the new moon. Oh, I love I love the new moon. That is that is my time to fish. That's when I love fishing the most. But anyway, let me close that out. Weather, wind, and tide. Again, this does not, those, the tide bite forecast doesn't mean you're going to start catching fish at a certain time. Just kind of gives you a measurement, kind of kind of sets the tone. You know, you have low tide at 530, or if you have high tide at 530, or if you have a high tide at 1, low tide at 2, wh whatever, whenever that tide is moving, then typically an hour before, an hour and after in there is when you can experience, when you can run that bite can really kick on. And even one that bite can really shut off too. If you have outgoing tide all single day and then it starts coming back in, sometimes the bite can turn off. Just depends on what the fish are doing. So this is what I like to do. I like to do this for my patrons. I do this every week. Kind of lets them know, um, let them know what I'm, where I'm fishing, how I'm fishing, uh, what is going in my mind when I'm planning my week. So going into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if you're if you're just a weekend fisherman and you have to work Monday through Friday like most people. And uh but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, between Saturday and Sunday, Sunday looks like the better bite day. Just because based on water movement, right? So you're looking at wind, looking at rain, those are those are you know, those the what the weather is doing also plays a big part. You know, having scattered showers can be a very good thing. When you have that 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 pressure drop uh, the barometric pressure drop, or the year, it doesn't matter what, what you're fishing for. Flounder reds are specs. It not only does it affect the predator fish, the flounder, not so much. Flounder can do their own thing, um, but it will affect the bait fish. So bait is moving, more moving, more active, and that barometric pressure drops and makes them more active. It makes the predator fish more active too. So keep that in mind. If there are scattered showers and you can't get out there, not talking about this big crazy front that comes through when you get a downpour and you get like 30 mile an hour winds. I'm not talking about fishing and something like that. I'm just mean that if you're looking and there are scattered showers in your area, you're like, look, I really don't want to get wet. Sometimes those are the best days of fish. You know, those are when the fish are the most active. So, um, Kind of have to push the envelope a little bit and be uncomfortable a little bit. But, hey, I hope this helps you going into the opening of flounder season again. You know, December 15th, midnight, 12 a.m., December 15th, when the clock turns from the 14th to the 15th, you can harvest fish. Keep in mind, you know, there's still regulations. You can only keep five. You have to be at least 15 inches. So keep in mind, you know, don't get don't get caught doing something goofy just because you can finally keep fish. Uh, and... Uh, so what I'm what I'm seeing and what I'll just share this with you real fast. What I'm seeing and what 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 has been trending is that the bite kind of stalled out a little bit, uh, and it happens. It happens every time this time of year. That's kind of why they open the season back up, is because the the fish will stall out a little bit. You get smaller groups of flounder running through the area, and you get the groups that run through the area. You get them more spaced apart. So it really just starts thinning out. The herd does, but the big girls start moving into, so you you'll start running into a lot bigger flounder. At least that's typically what the trend has been. You know, uh, I think because our waters have been so warm and our, 
I, I was watching the Hughes this morning, and I think the Houston average should be about 49 degrees right now, and or this morning, and it was 66 degrees. So that just shows you how much warmer it is right now than it should be. So every time that the water temperature drops, the, the air temperature drops, the water temperature drops, it triggers flounder to migrate and move off. And now we had a a day where we had like 160 flounder like in four hours between like three or four of us. And um, I haven't seen those numbers since then. Uh, but that was like right after a big cold front. I mean, it was 30 mile an hour winds. It was cold. Hands hurt. That whole week was freezing. But we're going to experience that this week. We this is We have a cold front coming through. At the right time, we haven't experienced a lot of cold fronts. So, we have a cold front coming in like in a couple days. Then we have a cold front coming in again later week. So, if that holds true, then we should see really nice two big push. We should see a nice big push this week when the flower season opens. Then we should see one possibly after the weekend. Fingers crossed. The cold fronts come all the way down and reach the coastal area, and we'll get that big transition to flounder. Everybody can catch their limit. Everybody can have a good time, pull out some big girls, take them home, do what y'all like to do with flatties. All right, but thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you. And again, I do this every week. I do this every week for my patrons. So if this is something that interests you, you want more fish forecasts. And I just don't talk about flounder. You know, in the summertime, when the, when the surf is flat, I'll discuss that. Um, I also throw open invites during this the, this kind of transition. If I am going to hit the water, and I think it's an area that uh, it'll be easy to get a group of people together, I will throw an open invite for um, for my patrons. And uh, like if I'm in kayak mode, which I kind of am this week, I'm in kayak mode. Believe it or not, uh, the flounder season is opening, and I'm like thinking, where can I take my kayak out because I want to be on the water in my kayak. But if I'm in kayak mode, uh, I'll kind of look at areas. I might look at Freeport. I might look at Sabine. I'll look at different areas for my fishing forecast because that's where I'm thinking. That's where I want to go. This week is something special. That's why I'm sharing with you guys because we do have the reopening of flounder season. But thanks. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, leave them below. And uh, hopefully next time you catch me, hook it up. Thanks.